Uh, it's, what's funny about today is now, I you know, I I don't really know any of the new generation of falconers, and it's like I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, you get old and you you kind of fall out of, of sorts with all the new people and uh, the club and stuff. I'm not real active with the club anymore like I used to be when I was young. And uh, 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 luckily we have the Utah Sky Trials and this Merlin meet, and uh, these types of things can bring us all together so we have a chance to, because uh, falconry is very much an individual sport where you get out by yourself and fly your birds, and uh, it's not really, you know, uh, uh, where you, you don't, uh, something you do with groups of people. And so it's nice to have get-togethers like the Utah Sky Trials and the Utah Merlin meet that will be coming up soon that we're, Falconers can get together and share their love and stories with each other and their ideas on training birds. I've done it ever since it began, since the very first one. So I don't know how many years it's been going, but I have had one a few times. And, you know, it took a lot of seconds and thirds too. But uh, it's always been a fun time. And hopefully uh, it, it, it kind of was kind of like dropping off. But I'm hoping we see it come back again because what I would like to say to the young falconers, People say, well, you had a great, you had pheasants right out in South Jordan. You could just, yeah, but all we had was prey falcons. We didn't have telemetry. We didn't have drones. We didn't have GPS. Nowadays, you can have any kind of falcon you want. You can buy a pair, you can have a peregrine. We couldn't have a peregrine. You could have a jure falcon. You can have whatever you want. And there are areas still you can go out and train your birds, and you have the technology available to you so that you don't lose them. You can train them better than we could ever train them. You can make them so strong and so fit. And you say you don't have time? Well, make time to at least on your weekends drawn, take that falcon out and go somewhere and make a trip and go hunt it. Falcons. They all set their wings when they're going up to it like, well, why don't you serve me a pigeon? So I don't want to confuse them and mix them up. I just want to use the drone and get them. You don't have to hunt it every day because that's the one thing that's great about the technology today. You can train a bird to fly to a drone. It doesn't spoil it for hunting it. We didn't have those things. If you take a bird out and serve it bag game every day, that spoils it for hunting because bag game doesn't compare to wild game. But chasing, a, uh, exercising them to a drone keeps them fit. And it's a natural thing that they like to do because birds in the wild steal quarry from other birds and so they love doing it they think they're stealing food from another bird when they go up there after it and uh, you can make an exceptionally great flying falcon and then you can make a, a trip for two weeks and go hunt somewhere and catch game and so really there's no excuse for not flying a big long wing anymore it's like you should be able to do it and do it really well and uh, it's just i think nowadays everybody's too uh too busy you know with uh, I hate to say it, but we have too much information at our fingertips. And in the old days, you used to have to work hard to get that information, and it made you hungry for it, and it made you want to work so hard to find it. And today's generation with the Internet, everything's, you know, hey, series. And, uh, it, you know, it's just it's made it so easy that I think it's made people a little bit lazy. I could be wrong, but that's the way I see it. Falconry is a very much an individual uh, thing where you, you know you can't. A lot of people can't come and see it. Uh, you're out doing it. On, this is a time when falconers could get together and they everyone get to see everybody's bird fly, and uh, uh, so it's kind of a social. It's no, has nothing to do with falconry because it's just a, a, a time where falconers are going to take a day off from their falconry. They're going to go out and fly their birds so other people can actually see a falcon fly. And uh, homing pigeon is a really good quarry and challenges a falcon. And so very seldom do the pigeons get caught by the falcons because they're so difficult, but they provide good uh, flights. And so it's just a, a social gathering that, uh, sh uh, where a falconer can show off the skills of his bird to his fellow falconers. And it's come to be where there will be other people come to watch it. And 
uh, it's you know, but but I I like to make sure that people understand that you know sky trails isn't falconry. Sky trails is just a, 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 a kind of the end of the season celebration where the falconers come together and everybody flies their birds and we have a social and everybody's in good spirits and gets to watch the falcons fly and uh, it's fun. It's the fun fun meet. Well, uh, it, you know, the, the the last year I don't know how many people, birds were in it, but uh, really the uh, there weren't the, the the interest in the sky trails seemed to have dropped off a little bit. And uh, hopefully that it, uh, because I did that, it'll come back. There'll be some guys out there that, uh, you know, yeah. It, you know, everyone, that's the thing about humans. We have a competitive nature about us, and we want to uh, best the next guy, you know. And so uh, I, I hope that someone's there that has a really good flying falcon, and we get to see spectacular flights, and that's what it's about. And uh, hopefully my birds do well. And uh, but it, like I say, it's a one-shot deal. You never know what will happen with your flight. And uh uh, but it's fun, and hopefully we have good weather. Fifteenth and sixteenth is the 16th. sky trials, and I will have my books for sale out there. My new book is called "The Art of Hawking Sage Grouse." Uh, not only does it uh, have uh, stories about some of the birds that we talked about in it, but uh, recently I've been making trips to the Arctic uh, to photograph deer falcons, and on my bucket list was to photograph. Uh, to, uh, find a nest of a white deer falcon and it's taken me five trips to the Arctic to finally find that and last year I floated a river and found a white deer area and was able to photograph it and those photographs are in the book and uh, some of my adventures in Alaska I have uh, I have a story in there too about uh, an adventure to uh, Patagonia to uh, uh, photograph uh, and trap uh, pallid falcons which are the white phase of the Cassini peregrine and so there's some new things in the book which I think people will enjoy. And it's uh, I have to give a shout out to uh, the uh, uh, NAFA uh, NAFA's journal and uh, Hawk Chalk editor Dan Milner. He's a, truly an artist, and he uh, helped. He uh, I met, talked to him last year up at the Archives of Falconry, and he said that he would. Uh, he saw my book, the original one, and he said he would help me uh, redo it. And uh, he has been unbelievable he is truly an artist and uh, the book is a, a really a work of art uh, as far as the way he laid it out and uh, I, I want to give a shout out to Dan for doing such a fantastic job and helping me put this together and and for the great job he does with the hawk chalks for NAFA and the journal he's just a, does an amazing job <laughs>